Howdy folks and welcome to episode 60 of Do Not Worry, a very special emotional episode where we're going to talk, it's like, do you guys know uh, G- GTA Vice City with uh, Fernando Martinez on Emotion Radio? Uh, so this is what it's going to be folks, today's a very special episode where we're going to be taking your questions and giving you our beautiful viewers that we love so much, advice, life advice, relationship advice. Most of what you guys sent was relationship focused. So this is kind of like a, a Valentine's Day special. Valentine's Day, when's Valentine's Day? In February? February 14th. It's a little late, folks. We're a little late, but we're here with all of your love questions. And we're here to mend these broken hearts, fix these broken wings, and learn to fly again. I'm, I'm, my mind is stuck in Vice City land. Interns, how is it going? How are you? I'm good. But I don't the Vice City reference. Have you, you the, the game? The emotion, the radio station from Fernando. Oh, I am feeling well, Fernando well, today. Well. I will give you one. Forget about it. Anyways, folks, take a second to like this video. Leave a comment. Your engagement. Hashtag engagement. Super helpful for a small channel like this one. Subscribe to the channel. Become a Do Not Warrior. I don't want to take too much time today, folks. Uh, ooh, we got some. Some. Let's thank some new patrons, folks. A brand new blonde patron, Mehed Krikorian. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. And a, a new abductee patron, Eli Tuma, friend of the show. Eli Tuma, thank you for becoming a patron. And a brand new superhero patron, Joe Rad. Thank you so much, all three of you legends, for becoming Do Not uh, Patrons. I forgot the word. Thank you, guys. We love you. We couldn't do this without you guys. If you want to support us on Patreon, if you want to support this podcast, my interns, our vlogs, my Joseph Medaib documentary that's coming up, Join our Patreon. Uh, it would m- mean the world to us. It would make such a big difference. Speaking of vlogs, we just came back from recording a second vlog. We just came from Kawaii Cafe in Mono. We got some some uh, Japanese cheesecake. So look out for that vlog. Noor is hard at work editing it. And also, if you're a patron, Noor is working on two uh, Patreon exclusive videos. A Joseph Mira vlog from the day that I went to meet him. That's going to be exclusive for patrons. And we're doing the Patreon Q&A today, the questions that you guys sent in on Patreon. I'm going to ask the interns all those questions, get those answers for you. So join our Patreon. Folks, without further ado, uh, we're not going to be... T- There's a bunch of things that I thought we might want to talk about this week, like Joseph Shad and Azal, a new TikTok talking about relationships. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about the Najat lady. What's her name, the politician? Uh, Najat Aoun. Najat Aoun and what she said about Nabih Birre. We ain't going... We ain't giving you a pass, though. We don't like you no more, lady. Uh, we're not going to talk about anything. We're going straight into your questions, folks, giving you advice. And without further ado, let's get going. So last week on the show, we asked you guys to send us your questions, whether you wanted to send them anonymously on Instagram. We had that NGL link that everyone's been doing. So we got a bunch of anonymous uh, submissions and we got a couple of non-anonymous ones, but we got some that were off topic that I just wanted to read. So I asked people very clearly, if you have a problem in your life, relationship, travel, work, anything, ask us a question and we will give you advice. So here's one that I got. Somehow I liked your show better before. Your views and your content changed. The whole show was more mature than what it is now. Used to wait for new episodes. Now I barely watch it. Most of the times I just skip through it. Listen, whoever you are, I didn't ask for this right now, man. You want to send me this kind of feedback? Leave a comment or some shit, all right? Just read the fucking room, man. I didn't ask for this shit. Okay, and I don't give a fuck if you're skipping through the show. Stop watching. Do us all a favor, all right? And nut up and send me this fucking message, not anonymously. God damn, you think, I, you think I'm afraid of criticism? I don't give a fuck. But again, it's not what I asked for. Next person. I feel that your content nowadays is pure negative. You keep criticizing others without offering an alternative. Please try and be more positive. Maybe from time to time, share good content and encourage more creators to be more creative. Oh, I'm sorry that the free content that I'm supplying you guys every fucking week isn't to your liking. Stop fucking watching, man. And again, I didn't ask for this fucking shit. People so fucking, as if I give a shit about this feedback. Be more po- And the show has been more positive. It's people like you that make me not want to be positive. And this wouldn't have bothered me at all if this wasn't anonymous. And it's like, this is not at all what I asked. I'm like, send us questions. We'll give you advice. And then you get these fucking annoying little fucks. Fuck you, unsubscribe. Uh, and this fucking creep. This guy, this one, you get the cake for most fucking off. No, I apologize to bring this. This, this, this one was really gross. Nu is the cutest. Would definitely ask her out if she was a few years older. First of all, how old are you? That's so fucking gross. I find that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I would definitely ask her out if you, No, who asked you? Who asked you? I don't know. I don't want to fucking see this, bro. If you thought this was funny or cute. This was fucking gross. No, I'm sorry about that. <sighs> now let's get into the people who actually followed the rules and sent 
who wanted our genuine advice. There's a lot of them, folks. So we're going to start with the first one. This one was intense. I'm a single guy. It's been over a month where me and a coworker have been flirting daily and setting up morning walks prior to work. Tension is high when we're together, and attraction and the spark are surely there. However, the thing is that she's married, and has been married for a few years, and has kids. Maybe she's just using me to fill an emotional void that her... And then it stopped, like, I think he sent a message that was way too long, like, I couldn't scroll down. Well, I'm gonna guess that he's finishing the sentence with... Maybe she's using me to fill an emotional void that her husband and family are causing at home. That's what I'm assuming the message is. So, Mr. Single Guy, time to give him some advice. This guy is, a, this is a pretty complex issue. So you're, you're, you feel there's this sexual tension between him and a married woman. You have these walks prior to work. Here's what I'll tell you. She seems down. <laughs> she's half, she's going on those walks. Look, I don't know. You gotta feel, if you're feeling a spark, if you're feeling something, now, I would never advise anyone to cheat, but I'm talking to you now. You're not married. <laughs> she is. If she... You guys go. You guys go ahead. You guys go first. You guys yeah, go first. My no, opinion. Go but first. Michelle uh, said cheating or anything, but in hex scenarios, most of the time, you're gonna end up heartbroken yourself. Because in you have no one. So, avoid hex yeah, like, scenarios. Yeah, like, the outcome and how... من this whole situation ما حيكون like مزبوط انه او she's gonna leave her husband او she's gonna lie to him for the rest of her life وانه انت what good are you doing to yourself exactly. and what future do you expect don't accept you know, to be the side bitch and you actually you answered your own you gave yourself advice in the question you said maybe she's just using me to fill an emotional void that you know her husband and family are leaving at home which is which is exactly what she's probably doing now Having said that, you want to cause a little trouble in the office, want to have a little bit of fun. I mean, you are going on these walks. See where it goes. Feel it out. You know what I mean? There's the tension. If the spark is there, listen, bro. Okay? I don't want to stand in the way of love. What if she's unhappy in her marriage? Do, we, do I want this lady to stay in a loveless marriage just because she's married and she's stuck with a bunch of kids? If there's a spark there, I don't want to get in the way of a real relationship that has potential. So you know what? Keep going on those walks for another month. Feel it out. And if it feels good, ask her if you can kiss her. Nana, don't be a homewrecker. La, I know. If she is really unhappy, I know. Leave your husband, but then maybe go for walks with this single exactly. guy. If she's watching, yeah, leave your husband and go with this guy. She's not watching though. He's he is. Ella, la, sahaptak, your work wife. Well, I hope that helped. Uh, you guys, we feel good about the advice we gave him. Yeah. Personally, eh. I don't feel good about your advice. I told him that. His, he answered his question and the thing. And she, you are filling a void. It's probably not serious. But if it is, if there is that little spark, I say go for it, bro. You'll have some fun. Next question. Amr is 27 years old and I don't know what to do Help. Join the club. I know it's, I, in the way, it's never too late. Like you can like just do more research, search for like what makes you happy. Um, Watch the podcast. Listen, I, I'm 31. I'm turning 32 end of the summer. I can help out this 27 year old better than you two kids. Okay, I've been through some shit in my life. All right. I'm 31. I still don't know what the fuck I'm doing with my life. I just literally did a huge career shift. I've been working in reality television for the past four years. I just made a huge shift and now I'm working in like drama, scripted television. I'm writing scripts for the first time in my life. Basically starting from scratch. And as Lebanese people, we have a double disadvantage because not only Anyone everywhere in the world deals with what, what do I want to do with the rest of my, for the rest of my life, identity crises, all that sort of thing. Lebanon, you have to deal with that on top of a crumbling economy, uh, just a horrible situation to be living in. So don't panic. There's, there's always this one quote, I forget exactly what it was, but someone said like Stan Lee didn't create the Fantastic Four till he was like 45 or something. The Fantastic Four are the characters that like relaunched his career and after he did the Fantastic Four, he did... Hulk and Iron Man and Thor, and he was just, it was the golden age of Marvel Comics, basically. At 45, or something like that. Don't quote me on it. I like to, when I try to be hopeful, I think of that. I'm, I'm a pessimist. I'm, like, I'm 31, I feel like I'm old as fuck, and like, what am I going to do? And I'm already a dinosaur, and everyone's moving on way quicker. Don't worry about it, it's not too late, trust me. I'm, I just made a big career move, it's a little scary. Best, uh, I'm happier than I've been in a long time, just in terms of happy with what I'm doing and I feel like I feel this sense of fulfillment that I didn't really get from my other job I get it from YouTube I get it from this 
but it's not too late. Uh, hone in on what you like. Try to focus on what you like. And if you can't make, get a job out of what you love, it's okay. Get a job doing something else, but find a way to work in what you love as a hobby or something that we still feel that sense of fulfillment. But don't panic. We've all been there. Ooh, uh, yeah. Next question. I think this one is directed to Noor. Uh, I am a Scuderia Ferrari fan. Yeah, um, good, good luck. Good luck on this season. Okay. I, I don't know what that reference is. I don't watch any Formula One. So whoever you are, I hope you got that. Next, I'm a 17-year-old music producer. I've been failing all my classes lately, although I've studied hard. My parents will kill me if they found out I'm failing and might repeat a grade for the second time. And unfortunately, I can't do music so please tell me, how do I convince my parents to let me pursue doing what I love? I think that's what he's saying, making music. So he's 17 years old. He's closer to you guys' age. What do you guys think? Okay, my opinion on this is like, I'm going to share a personal experience. I'm going to share a personal Can I keep this? Sure. Okay, awesome. <laughs> okay I'm going to share a personal experience. I was in the mothers like 16, 17. I was very hard. I hated everything. I wasn't like passionate about any topic or anything. وقت أصير بالجامعة ستطلع أول بالصف لون the teachers pad to loved by everyone ف إذا you're still in school school grades mean shit who don't don't let that get in your head وقصة تاني part إنه كيف تخلي أهلك يات إنه يقتنعوا إنه راح تقلك كيف I agree actually like هلا كمان شيء أنا تعلمته like I was never into school بس إنه I did fine like uh, just do the bare minimum at school like just pass your grades but then like when you're when you graduate to kill then do whatever you love but i like don't fail school بس اهلك بدهم اياك تكون مهندس هلا وضع البلد مهندس شحات بيسكلي انا رفقات تخرجوا هندسه ما قاعدين بلا شغل so قول لهم يو you're 17 so you're so close to the end i would say you know what i mean like you sin is and thin and you're done so stick it out no one likes i hated high school i fucking hate school i hate studying bro yeah and i i would never and i, I have a bachelor's degree i would never go back to get a master's i would never go back to get a phd i hate i like learning and education i hate school and that kind of boring learning it's not it's not a hickey i don't know it's not immersive it's not engaging at all i find um, he's failed. You guys, I think, are being a bit too lax. He's already failed once, and he might fail a second time. So we don't want to do that. His case is a little bit more dire. And aside, definitely. But like they said, the importance of high school is a little bit overrated. I know, in, like in American movies, they they freak you out. Like you need to be doing extracurricular activities, and you need to be the head of the whatever squad and the science team to get to the best college. It's not really like that. And I did okay in high school, and I went to can't be system libnene when I was younger. But Antoni Razir, bro, my grades fucking sucked. Can't amjib belechid like nuf on twenty because I was exempt from Arabic, so I was only doing very few things and I sucked at science or math so my grades fucking sucked switched to an American high school Sages high school did I be way easier studied the same amount I did but system libnene my grades fucking I was getting 85 86 average so maybe switching schools go to an American system if you can go switch to an American system school way fucking easier I'm, I'm not kidding you um you have time to do what you love do it in your in your free time there's plenty of time there after school, weekends with your friends. Don't worry about that. Once you graduate, uh, like convincing your parents that could handy so doctor, like a lot of parents think like that. They think they they're thinking like that for you, okay? Because they're afraid that you're going to be unemployed. They think um handy doctor, it pays well. You just have to work with them. Shway, show them what you like. If you want to be a DJ, show them videos of like the coolest DJs doing their thing. Tell them I want to do that. I want to be that. I don't know, man. It's going to be hard convincing them. Don't fail school. Doing bad in school isn't going to help your argument. If you want to convince them, show them that you, that you can do school. Get the good grades. Be like, look, I can do both. The fact that now they're looking at your music production in a negative light is because it's affecting your schoolwork. Get your schoolwork where it needs to be. That way your parents don't question your, your music stuff. All right? Do that. Next up, how should I ask my crush out now that one's a little bit vague you could have added a couple more details how old is she high school uh you guys in college you work co-workers and yeah, there's a lot of options bro how should i ask out my crush i'm gonna give you the easiest way the the 2022 way dm her on instagram De depending on like that's the safest option i could give you because it's it's the one you could apply to most if you don't know her very well you kind of have to dm her if you know her well you could be like hey i'm too shy to ask you this in person 
or WhatsApp, I don't know. If you don't know each other at all, there's a big thing of separation between you. Instagram DM, don't make it creepy. Try to be as respectful as you can. Uh, and then if you get turned down, be fucking nice and fucking accept it because that is what is most likely going to happen to you. And I mean, yeah, very vague. Give more details so it can be more to work with next time. How to make money online from Lebanon. <laughs> See, like, you should have Googled that. You can... Yeah, like, this is more of like a question than like advice. But I'm going to give you what, what we're trying to do here. Hone, we're creating videos. Uh, videos generate a little bit of advertising money. Uh, we've set up a Patreon asking people to send us money and uh, we don't we don't live off of this money it's not like <laughs> basically <laughs> it's probably not that easy to make a lot of money online but you could try to look into selling stuff products starting a um, like an etsy shop in the states like if you have any talents you do like any type of craft any kind of art set up a page on instagram promote it on tiktok get like a weird gimmick ta 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 habibi ta 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 badak art badak you know what i mean whatever it is anthony i got stood up by my date because he wanted to watch stranger things Watch Stranger Things Mal. Um, no. I think I know what this is about. Listen, what, I, what, I, what I'll say to this strange person who sent this, who I definitely don't know. Maybe the guy just wanted to avoid spoilers, okay? Maybe he didn't want to risk not watching Stranger Things and getting on Twitter later that night. Anthony, are you the one? Who... Maybe. Maybe this is me <laughs> she's talking about. <laughs> This and, is too personal. And I may or may not have done this before. Again, someone else for the Mandalorian season two finale. I ditched someone for Mandalorian. Listen, guys, me and t I'm, I don't like spoilers, okay? And uh, look, I'll just say that I'll make it up to you if I get the, the opportunity. And get over it, all right? It's been years. No oh, it was way, you? Anthony, and it was a good no And it was a good it was a good season of Stranger Things. No way. Look, man, it won't happen again, I promise. I promise. Khalas, season four is great. I'll never skip season four. Never Disappointed. Again. Disappointed. This was a while ago, guys. Hey, look, I'm I love my television. Alright, next question. I love her so much, but she has a boyfriend. Okay, move on. You know, is that she doesn't feel the same. Because she's taken what she's off the market. Hey, I mean, Unless it's like an open relationship, she's not cheating. But no, Khalas, move on. Then I'm not sure. Yeah, like, yeah. Do, do what's best for you. I know there's nothing there for you. So, like, move on as soon as possible. Yeah, you know, I mean, look, I, I understand this guy. He's all melancholic. He's, uh, I, it takes me a while to get over. One of the questions later asked about, like, how, how to get over someone. I, personally, I, sometimes it takes me a while. If you really like someone, right, if, it depends on the person. Guys, good people are hard to come by sometimes. Sometimes you meet someone, you're like, damn, that person is the one. And for one reason or another, sometimes it's out of your hands. Maybe they need to travel to Europe to pursue their education. Uh, what can you do? <laughs> There's nothing you can do. Uh, so does that mean, then if they get a boyfriend, can, can you, does that mean you have to stop thinking about them? Look, I mean, she has a boyfriend. If she's like in a happy relationship, get over just because you're going to hurt yourself. You know what I mean? You're, you're the one getting hurt. Get yourself a girlfriend. Maybe you'll forget about her. You know what I mean? Just plenty of fish in the sea. Hey, hey, hey. Whoa. Uh, here's what you should do. And it's, it's kind of worked with me surprisingly. Maintain a great relationship with her. Just be super friendly, be super nice. Don't be creepy or anything. When they break up, you'll probably, you might get another chance, man. It's happened with me. There are people that I thought like years ago, like I'm never, it's never going to work out. Many years later, like works out. You never know. Be patient. You know what I mean? Be patient. No, no. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't wait for her. But it's like, go live your life. And then maybe some, some shit's going to happen where like your paths are going to cross again. You know what I mean? It, it happens more often than you think, weirdly enough. Uh, hello, Anthony. I'm a Lebanese national and I just won the American DV lottery. But I don't know anyone in the US. I would appreciate your advice. This is a bit technical. <laughs> I don't know much about embassies and stuff. So I guess this is the lottery where you win like a visa. I applied for this because I wasn't chosen. Uh, I know I wasn't chosen. <laughs> <laughs> Very useful. If you don't know anyone in the US. Uh... That lucky person. I have chances of getting accepted. Yeah, I mean, I, Mabru, congratulations. Hope you find someone in the States. Try online dating. Try to find like someone in the states a lady that needs like a husband or a or a husband or a man that needs a, a woman whoever what, whatever gender you are hey i don't believe in god but i feel like islam is the right way when i follow the rules i feel like i'm trapped in a prison even though i don't believe in god i feel forced to follow islam because i feel like i'm gonna regret it should i take a different path so i can feel better or stick with my gut feeling now this one's this one's a little heavy first let me just mention uh i'm uh, i was 
atheist slash agnostic. I think atheists like are sure that like there's no God. I don't fucking know. I don't know what's going on out there. So I'm just not religious. I don't believe in anything really. But I was raised like I wasn't really raised. So I'm Christian technically. So just speaking of my background. Let me read this again. You guys, if you have something to say, go for it. I need to read it again to make sure I understand what he's asking. Okay, the reason you're feeling you know, you, like a part of you still thinks it's wrong and you, know, you don't believe in God. I know you've you know, you've been brainwashed since birth. But on the path about your religiousness, you're gonna feel shit. But you know, follow your God. Nice. Yeah, and like uh, I would feel. Like, like you said, I know. No, I feel no. Yeah, I think like. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, like you said, I know you were raised, for Muslim, all your life, and like, um, but then like you start to, like, form your own opinion, and like, and it's hard to like let go. I kill she, my mom, and I'm below. Like, you can. It's part of being attached to your parents. Oh, sorry. Oh, whatever. So. Don't say that, like. So, eh, like, uh, like. I would say like just shway it to it and like you will figure it out. Like it, ju- it needs a lot of reflection, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. This is, I mean, this is a very personal question. This is faith-based. Like it's what I will say is you kind of you've answered or you've you've answered your question for yourself again. He's like, hey, I don't believe in God, but I feel like Islam is the right way. When I follow the rules, I feel like I'm trapped in a prison. So the fact that you feel like you're trapped in a prison, um, I think is a bad sign. You know what I mean? Nothing. No religion should make you feel like you're trapped in a prison or nothing you do. And then you say, I feel forced to follow Islam because I feel like I'm going to regret it. So you feel, A, you say you, it makes you feel like you're trapped in a prison and you feel forced to do it because if you don't, you're going to regret it. So it's just this kind of like, what if, and you're living in this constant fear, like if I don't do, do this, I'm going to regret it. But it doesn't feel right. I would say go with your gut. You know what I mean? And again, like I'm not trying to be this like atheist who God doesn't exist. I was, when I first decided that like that I was an atheist, I was kind of like that obnoxious person who would like make fun of religious people and like debate my parents over lunch. Like, ha you guys believe in God? That's so stupid. Like, I don't give up. Now I'm like way more chill. And like, now I'm, I'm actually like, I cannot definitively say that there is no God. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I, every option is on the table. The earth could be a video game. It could be a science experiment. It could be a fever dream. I don't know what life is. You know, people, the big bang. Yeah. What started the big bang? Where'd the big bang come from? You know what? Like, so I'm not going to like, oh, religion is stupid. Nah, bro. I get why people are religious. I understand it. Follow your gut. You know what I mean? I followed my gut and it's, I feel like it's guided me pretty well so far. Um, So do the same. And nothing should feel like a prison or trapped or forced. I feel forced to follow Islam. Don't do it, man. All right. Do what makes you happy. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. Do that. Okay, that's what God would want if he existed. Help! I can't seem to decide what major I want to study in uni. I'm a senior this year, just finished S2S, and I feel like time is running out. All my friends already know what they want, and it's making me more anxious. I want you to forget what your friends like you're probably used to in the school, but you can go to In university, it's mm. totally different. You can go to the same thing, you can go to the same thing, it's the same shit. That's great advice. But I give amazing <laughs> advice. DM me. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I can't say it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, I don't remember. <laughs> and I know what it feels like. <laughs> yeah. Um, come in, like, just take your time. You will figure it out. Like, what, like try to think, and what do you like to do? Try to find something like a major <coughs> related to it that can like kind of make you money or oh, not like whatever you like yeah i know what i did i was thinking to khraj then i decided that i want to get employed but it's khraj because khraj will get you no jobs for fit marketing i wasn't sure of it but i thought it would be okay and now i'm going to get a little bit of time but now i'm employed and all of us are unemployed to get a job before so i'm not going to get a job or get a job i kind of went through this as well when i when i um also, that, that's another option. Maybe take a gap year if you can afford. If you don't have to go to uni right after high school, uh, consider taking a year off. Maybe travel, uh, spend time working with your family or whatever, you know, whatever your life situation is like. If you can afford to take a gap year and really maybe try to travel and figure out what you like during that time, that is an option for you. When I got accepted into college in the States, I got accepted as a film student. I was going to study film, movies, all of that. Then I got really scared because I was like, my parents are going to be spending so much money to send me here. And what if I never get a job? And I don't know if this university is the right place to study film. So I last second changed my major to marketing because I figured this is general enough as to where 
I could do a lot. So maybe pick a major if you're not sure and you have to go to college right after high school. Pick a major that can that is very broad, that can allow you to do many, many different things. Marketing is one of those things because it's very hard to define. I, would I recommend a marketing degree? No, because they're pretty useless because marketing has all become social media. Learn TikTok, you've learned marketing. That's what it is nowadays. But try to think of it that way. Try to do something pretty broad. And look, maybe during your first semester, you'll figure out what you like. You can switch majors. You might have to redo a couple of classes. That's fine. Try not to stress about it. Don't look at, yeah, don't ignore what your friends are doing. Each one's path is different. Everyone likes different things. So that don't, that shouldn't create any pressure. Let's take your time if you can, or if you have to do something, just do something broad, whether like if, if you're into science, do like the broadest thing you can within science and then try to, you know, hone in on what you like, the more you do it. La, oh, sometimes like the answer is right there. You're just scared of it. So. Ooh, so Ooh. fortune, uh, fortune cookie type thing right there. <laughs> Next question. Nah, this is, this is one I was alluding to earlier. How do you get over someone and fast? Our boy, our girl here is clearly heartbroken and uh, they need a remedy. They need a fast. Now, I'm not the right person to ask because I, it sometimes takes me a while to get over someone. Now, again, I'm, there's, there's the person who may or may not have gone to Europe. Uh, it's been like a year and a half, two years. It's kind of hard, like it's, especially if you meet someone that you, you think is really like, that you really like and that you're not sure that you're gonna meet someone like them anytime soon tend to think of it as like, a, I don't know, like a missed opportunity or, a, you know, the one that got away. I struggle. I ain't got nothing to tell you. Try to spend time with friends, you know, surround yourself with your friends. Try not to think about the person too much. Play some video games. It will, it will always get better. It sometimes it takes, sometimes it feels like it's not going to get any better, but eventually it will. Even if it's been two, three months, you're like, fuck, this is horrible. I still feel really bad. It might still feel bad for another two, three months, but eventually it always gets better. Um, I know my advice be stuck like because your advice is like spend time with your friends and play with like no process everything spend time with yourself think about it like um go out alone have lunch alone it's like feel okay to be alone so, uh, <laughs> and i do the exact i don't kill shots moves on in their own way and i tend to fuck around a lot I would like to you know, date several people instead and get my mind off that person. You were having a nice PG-13 episode, but now they fuck around a lot. <laughs> the viewers that enjoy this. Three, but we're not This is a family-friendly episode. I'm all made for them. Fernando, uh, family, friendly. Oh, uh, so I mean, yeah, but I, I, there's one correction. Playing video games, I consider that spending time with yourself. What am I? What I play? That's, no, because you want like, to stare I'm at the wall. <laughs> Like it's t- it's taking Listen, your mind off take of the things corner. instead of thinking about and processing it. No, you, I'm touching. Noob's advice is Noob's. Yeah, your it's advice very is, generic. Your is, no, Noob's advice makes the person seem way more depressed. Like imagine his ex is out and she sees him eating alone at a restaurant, like all <laughs> sad. Like you're gonna yeah, look so. Pathetic. Is, it's it's very empowering, I would say. I love eating. I love hanging out. I I do things alone all the time. But so no, it's just a. Let's agree to disagree. It's funny. I would just spend time with friends, smoke some weed, drink some alcohol, man. I agree with what Elijah said as well. You know, go out, meet some, meet some lady friends or some guy friends. Get over. If if you're if again depends. Like if you're really into the person, I know. I would just sit at home and be depressed. Personally, that's what I would do. I'm not the right person to ask for this. Next, I am in a relationship with a guy. I feel that I want to be in an open relationship, but he is refusing it. What should I do? P.S. I am also a guy. Ooh, we got some gay love. Okay, so my advice is gonna be biased and Anna personally, I'm against open relationships. So like start off by asking yourself, why do you want an open relationship? Um, you're obviously seeking something else. Oh, they're like, there's something missing in your relationship. And like, are you just scared of leaving? Are you scared of being alone? Are you scared of like, not finding this kind of commitment that you have? So like start by answering these questions but then like check if you really want an open relationship or like you just want something else and you're bored or you're scared or whatever very mature answer Elijah I'm like she uh... no obviously if your partner doesn't want it then obviously you can't have an open relationship with him oh then is she and no are you sure you wouldn't get jealous like from both sides that's my main take on open relationships I'm not against it, and if you're both down, go ahead. But if one of you is not down, is the last one able or not, it will feel like some drama. Yeah. Also, also, if you really want, if you really, really want an open relationship, you're, 
your significant other doesn't and like at some point like you're gonna have some kind of resentment so like you should work on that <laughs> I agree with what you guys were saying for the most part. I, I'm not into open relationships. To me, an open relationship is being single. That's what an open relationship is. You want to uh, hook up with this person. You want to spend time with this person, this person. You're single. Go ahead. Um, if you're in a relationship and you want to do that, that's not what's the point of the relationship. Uh, maybe I'm old fashioned. But to me, if you're going to be in a relationship with someone, you kind of got to commit. Like, I'm going to give you all my attention. Like, you're the, you're the person I want. You know what I mean? Guess it's old fashioned. I don't know. Hassan, one relationship is like a lot of maintenance. Imagine, like, I'm trying to group you full of your partners. Like, I'm yeah, like, yeah. hi so, guys. And I'm, I'm very <laughs> skeptical. I'm super skeptical about uh, open relationships working. And also, like, if you do want to get into an open relationship, you both have to agree to it, I think, before you start the relationship. Like, if it's if you both agree to it, and then, oh, well, like, hey, you want to do this, best? let's do an open relationship type thing, that could work. Once you're both in a committed relationship, and then one of you is like, hey, you want to. You want to go open relationship? If I were the other person, that's a red flag. Like you're unhappy. You, you, you don't want to be part of the relationship anymore. So by asking, like once you're already in a relationship and then you, but like it's open relationship, that's weird. Like that's a red flag. If I were your, your partner, I'd be like, seems like you're bored or you, you don't want to be in this anymore. And I would break up with you. So either stop pushing the open relationship because he's clearly not into it or just get out of the relationship because you're not happy and you want to go have fun with other people. You can't have it both ways. I think the open relationship thing is people trying to have it both ways. It's not always going to work. With some people, it does. And with me, it doesn't. I want, I want you to feel like you're special. I want to track your phone. I want to know where you're going. Location. بحب اعرف وين بتروحي وين بتجي. فيك توفري على حالك وتحطي هيدي الاوبشن على الجوجل مابس اللي اسمها شير لوكيشن عرفتيها؟ بصير في 24 على 24 ساعات اللي بدي اعرف وينك بفوت بشوف. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Should we leave Lebanon if we got a better opportunity abroad or stay with our family and try to work here even if it's not enough to build a proper future and because of instability? Whoever sent this, Yanni, this is the struggle that I think most people are struggling with here or many people are struggling with. A lot of factors to take into consideration. Obviously, if you have an opportunity to leave the country and live a better life abroad, take it. Don't say no. If you have a special case, if your parents here are sick, you have an, uh, an elderly parent, someone that needs your help, that needs your assistant, it makes that choice way more difficult. Trust me, I know. Um, being away from, from someone that needs you is very difficult. So uh, it's very hard. If your family, you gotta, what do you guys need? If, if money is a priority and you can make more money abroad and money is going to help your family, then you got to do the difficult thing and go abroad and earn that money and support your family. If you can afford to stay here, if you're one of the lucky ones who has a, a well-paying job here that pays in dollars and you can survive here, unlike many other people, maybe you can stay. So it depends on your financial situation. It depends on your, on your work and on, on your family, how close you are with your family, how much they need you. If they need you here, then maybe you're stuck here and that sucks and that's not fair. But that's what being Lebanese is at this point. It's a bunch of shit that sucks. It's not fair. And we kind of have to deal with a very shitty hand that was dealt to us. It's my advice. What do you guys think? My opinion would be depending on the opportunity. And was a khadukun al Dubai, ma'ashkhar, akid matruhu. But if you got like an opportunity in Europe or Canada or anything like worth moving to, akid go for it. Lano, no, ma tawza hajaj your family. Okay, people have a fear of change most of the times when they're moving yeah, to exactly. another country. But once you actually do it, I think it would be much easier than you thought. For fakra bhalkun. Yeah, I think a big part of the hesitation who it's fear so. Like, if you can just get over that, it would be Matsi, great. you can come back, <laughs> يعني, شي, you know, forever. يعني, you can just come back. So, <laughs> worth trying. Well, speaking out of experience, it's very scary to leave and start anew, you know, in a new country. It's not easy. And how about this? Try to aim, like, if you do have to leave, aim to maybe bring your family with you along in a few years. Like, go there, work as hard as you can, uh, build a solid financial base, and then maybe you can move them there. Maybe they could join you in a few years, so... It's not the end of the world. Like my, my sister has been living in the States alone for like 15 years and my parents just went and they're living with her now. So sh because they had to because of the situation, it's, it's hard. It's not easy. And good luck in your, you know, whatever you're trying to, whatever you end up deciding because it, it ain't easy. How do you stop hating on Arabs? The mentality is just so fucked up that sometimes I wish I never be meeting them. You don't stop hating them. Arab <laughs> Arab, once you know how we stop, let us know. I don't know. Just my main question is, I, I don't know if the person who sent this is, it's it, the question reads very differently if, if an Arab sent it or if a non-Arab sent it. If an Arab sent this, 
how do you stop hating on Arabs? The mentality is so fucked. And yeah, hey, I hate a lot of other Arabs too. I'm kind of ashamed of a lot of what Arabs do. If you're a foreigner, it's kind of racist. I gotta say, you know what I mean? Like the mentality kind of sucks, but I'm, we're Arabs. We're good Arabs. You know, you can, if you're watching the show and you sent in this message, that means you must like us. So not all Arabs are shitty. If you're, if you're foreign, I don't know. I just, I just wish I never be meeting them. So if you've met Arab people and you've had bad experiences with them and you're not Arab on their behalf, I apologize. I wish we could have done better. But um, if you're Arab, hey, I, I hate Arabs. I hate Lebanese people too, man, when, I, when I'm abroad sometimes. And I just want to stay away from them as much as I can. I, I love us and I hate us. You know what I mean? It's this complicated thing. Habibi, come to Darwish. I think I know who sent this. I think I know who sent this. Right. Well, we got a couple more. We got four more, like five more. Okay. We're almost done, folks. This, this shit's good. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Yeah, this one, I didn't understand it. But maybe you guys can understand it. How to get over the urge to say chronic illness whenever people try asking me stuff and avoid any questions about it because they will never understand and I'm not under underestimating them or something, but I don't care how much someone is trying to prove that they are open-minded and they accept everyone, but they don't. It's always the yi uh, le I did not understand this question. No, I think as like... Okay, I think, I think, like, this person has, like, some kind of, like... Chronic illness? Like, like, uh, some kind of face deformity. Like, well, I don't know what to say, like, or, like, the words to use. And, like, people are asking her, and, whatever, and, like, she's fighting the urge to say, and, it's chronic illness. Although it's maybe not. I don't know about oh, it. Uh, I don't understand it, honestly. I don't fully understand the question. If if you have some kind of illness and people are like bothering you about it. Fuck um, them, honestly. Fuck them, yeah. And like, li, li, whoever asks, Le Wijik Heik, is a fucked up person. Who the fuck yeah, asks? Like, 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 fuck you. Yeah. And if you do have some kind of facial deformity or something, we love you. Hey, all our deformed kings out there, whatever kind of disfigurement you have, you're beautiful. Because uh, Christina Aguilera once said, because I am beautiful no matter what they say. And words can't bring me down. Although I do disagree when they say sticks and stones. Words can hurt, guys. I think words can be very painful. So I just undid everything I just told you. Anyways, let's get to the next question. I struggle with social anxiety. And I can't feel comfortable around anyone. Minus my family members and my best friend. Which is my cousin. And I'm always afraid that I'll be lonely in the future. Plus, the idea of me not being able to bond with anyone romantically because of my anxiety breaks my heart. That's a very sweet message. I'm gonna answer this. Okay, I have a friend who's dealing with a similar situation. You can look at who knows. So basically, when you have like has social anxiety, like for another friend of mine, she got over it. And the trick is basically forcing yourself to go out. You might not enjoy it, and you might enjoy it. But so you have to try and like get yourself out of your comfort bubble. And once you do, you'll be fine and yeah, good to go. That's exactly what I did, by the way. I had really bad social anxiety, but like you force yourself and like you, you overcome it. Shai, shai. I also have a lot of anxiety. I hate people. I hate being out in public. I hate being in crowded areas, hanging out with a lot of people. If, if, if I have to go somewhere, like I'm, I, I can deal with stuff if it's usually pre-planned. Like if I know I have an event to go to, I can sometimes be okay with it. But sometimes it also, knowing that it's coming stresses me out because it's like this thing that's like, moving ever closer and I don't want to do it. And I also don't like last minute stuff like, hey, let's go to this thing in an hour, this big party. I'm like, oh shit, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Hey, the fear of being lonely. I think about that sometimes. I'm 31, I, I'm not, I don't get into very many relationships. I often think of like, am I gonna end up alone in, in the future? Um, I've gotten used to spending time with myself and enjoying being alone and COVID really helped with that. Like I spent fucking two years with me and my cat. I can entertain myself. I can spend days alone, not speak to another human being. I'll be fine. I can keep myself entertained. Um, don't use, don't, don't put the target of like, I don't want to be alone as, as, as the main driver to do things or to meet people. That shouldn't be the, uh, like, don't let fear drive you. You're letting fear being like, but if I don't do this, I'm going to be alone. Don't think like that. Just think of, I want to go out and meet some people. I want to have some fun. How do I get out of my comfort zone? Follow Elijah's advice. That sounds like it could be helpful, but just all I can say is don't fear being alone. You got time. There's a lot of time to meet people. And even if you are alone and you're not married, that that's not necessarily the worst thing. A lot of married people will tell you never get married. So should I propose to my girlfriend, even though I have no money? you love her or she you can stay to like prove the love unless you let it if you have no money, don't get married. Why the fuck would you? 
There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't really believe in marriage. I think people who spend a lot of money on weddings are, I mean, not stupid. Sometimes the family has, makes them do it. And hey, it's like, it's, I can't believe people would spend like $50,000 for like one night. That is insane to me. The, the amount of things you could do with the, the amount of money that people spend on their weddings is, is insane. So no, don't feel any pressure. You don't need to get married. If it's a family pressure, societal thing that you have to do, she needs to get married or else I can't, then I guess you have to do a small, very affordable wedding, bro. It's COVID, the whole world, the country, and the economic collapse. No one is going to blame you for not doing a big extravagant wedding. And if you can't afford it, that is the last thing you should worry about. Okay? I don't, I don't think Azduan in wedding. I think Azduan his future. Don't propose if you can't handle it financially. Don't have kids if you can't support them. Don't get into a marriage if you can't afford it. Don't buy a car that you can't afford. Don't buy a house that you can't afford. Same rules apply. No, you can't afford to, su to support her and give her the life that she needs. Uh... And uh, not live in financial stress? Don't do it. Wait. Mishmash Burin. There's no, unless again, then you're in another pickle. And if having money is, is, a, is something yeah, in the relationship, if you need to have money for her to be with you, come in, that's a problem. She needs to like you for who you are, understand your situation. If she loves you and she understands your current financial situation, she should be cool with it. If she's not cool with it, she ain't the one, third of the curb. My wedding is in two months. Any advice? Oh, great one. I'm going to give you something that I, I heard uh, a few years ago in the States when I was working. Happy wife, happy life. Keep your wife happy. Keep, her, keep a smile on her face. As long as she's happy, you'll probably be happy too. Um, it's the only, I'm, I, I don't think, I believe in marriage very much. I'm not a big fan of marriage. Uh, I, I can't see myself getting married, although I, I'm not ruling it out. But um, So I'm probably not the right person to ask, but happy wife, happy life. Interns? Um, Anna, I know them both from Twitter, so they're both very nice, very sweet people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, from what I know, they're very cute. So like, just keep doing yourself. You don't need them twice. Our final question, folks, our final question. And this one uh, is also a little bit uh, is intense. And I hope you can help this person uh, dealing with homophobic parents slash being disowned now. I can't relate, okay? Whoever you, whoever you are, I'm straight. Never had to break the news to my parents that, hey, mom and dad, I like guys. I never had to do that. I don't know how if, if they would have been cool with it. Maybe with time at first, it probably would have freaked them out. It's very hard. I'm obviously not the right person to tell you uh, whether you should come out uh, dealing with homophobic... I guess I his parents already know. Come out he has homophobic dealing parents. has homophobic parents being disowned. No, I think that... They already know. They came out. I think you've already come out and your parents Unless know you're they, gay, you know, they hate you. It might be like Shua Fam, you know, and they suspect it. If you're, if you're not out, don't come out. And you're not going to give it to the end. So, I don't want to put you in this scenario. But if you did, if you did, I would say like, like, just keep it on the low. Don't like, like, just deal mm. with your parents. Like, just, you, just, you have to exist with them until you move out, until yeah. you figure your shit out. So like yeah. just do what like the bare minimum what's necessary to like live with them and like not not become homeless or whatever. Yeah, and do what you gotta do yeah. until you can financially move out. Yeah. So for now, I, somehow I'm happy although I, I understand and it feels horrible like not to be yourself, especially to your parents or like yeah, your parents yeah, making course. you feel like you know you're not accepted in your own home or oh, like give us like whatever needs to be done until like you can be you do it. Also, my today, I know family or today I'm my fish. I keep going to. Ah, today, oh. Yeah, yeah, true. And you know, the family is not the family you're given by blood. It's the one you choose. But if your family wants to disown you, I live like I live. Who don't let it get in your head. Yeah, like I, I don't like telling people to you know, cut off your parents and stop talking to your family. What I would say, look, a lot of people are old-fashioned. You're in the Middle East. Maybe you're Muslim. Uh, to us, it's obvious. Gay, it's fine. We love gay people. To some people, it's not as obvious. So give them as much of a chance to become okay with it give them a chance it might take them a while and that's okay i think you know they, they might not be cool with it at first but give them that chance if after giving them a chance to be okay with it and to accept you for who you are and they're not accepting you it's okay to cut out toxic people from your life even if it's your family i i wish everyone has a great relationship with their parents with whoever it is but if your parents are not letting you be your true self they're making you feel bad they're, they're homophobic they hate you for who you are get out of there 
it's okay even if they're your parents surround make your own family surround yourself with people who love you for who you are but give them a shot at accepting because this is new for a lot of people this is new uh boomers are old-fashioned like they grew up a certain way you know what i mean uh so give them an opportunity but yeah as soon as you're able to to get out of there and surround yourself with people who you know who love you for who you are do that and then hopefully hopefully your parents will come around if they don't let them disown you um they're only your family by blood uh, don't let them disown you and i disown them there you go disown them so hope that helps again uh, don't do anything that's going to get you hurt uh, don't get anything that's going to get you kicked out of the house. Or if you do, make sure you have a backup plan. You have some friends that can that can have you over or something. And best of luck. Well, folks, that was it for our special love advice episode of 2022 with uh, Fernando on emotion. Thank you so much for joining us, folks. I had, had, had a lot of fun. We want to do this again. We were going to do this every week, hopefully. So send us your questions if you do. Take a second to like the video. Leave a comment. Um, if, if you want to, you know, if you want to ask a question that we can answer later in next, the next week's episode, do that. Subscribe to the channel. Become a Do Not Warrior. Let's just take a second to thank some beautiful patrons. Michelle Tawil, Joe Khoury, Gino Raide, Roni Abed, Enzo Esk, Mark Iwan, Daniel Habib, Darkwing Duck, Ingenious Baboon, Jad Sabr, superhero patrons like Joey To, Jessica Ann, Fadi Muerzel, Mukerzel, Rasha Audi, Ziad Ashar, Chris Habib, Joe Ghal, Muhammad Haytham. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we got some vlogs coming your way. We got some more stuff coming your way. We got some Patreon videos coming your way. Stay tuned to the channel. And as always, folks, do not worry. Do not worry.